and forth in a great many years because I didn't want to be relegated to another guest on a TV talk show. But I can assure you, Satanism is here to stay. Satan can take the form of a beautiful woman. Satan can take the form of a sleek animal. An automobile can be very satanic. These things. I would have to give that some thought because it's something I never thought about before in my life. Most of us probably haven't. A little afraid of something like that. Right, he says, you know, you know, it's written all over your face. You're afraid of, of going to a seance. But he says, I know you. He says, you're going to come. And uh, then he started telling me how brave I was when I was aboard ship, you know, <laughs> different things. He says, you're not the same man. You've changed. You're, you're chicken. That's all I needed to hear. I said, when do we go to the house? So one Saturday evening, we were in the place. It was the first time, very beautiful place, a medium, there was a lady. She had a gorgeous new home, in Montreal. And there were about 20 uh, invited guests there, which I was one of them. And uh, she communicated with the spirits for there's different people there. And you're telling them what the Spirit said. And then there was one lady that had been talking almost continually before the, the seance started. And she didn't believe in the, you know, the dead appearing and all of this and all that. And she said, well, I would have to see my dead sister. She says, to believe it. So <laughs> while this, uh, the seance was, was going, one man that, uh, said, I would like to talked to my friend that died six months ago but I don't want him to appear just want to talk to him because he says I don't trust you talking to my my friend for me so the so the uh, medium says let me inquire of the spirit yeah the spirit will will talk with you and that big masculine voice was heard in the place it says hi Frank nice of you to ask for me to talk with you. And they had a little chat. And after it was over, Frank says, this is the greatest thing on earth, to be able to talk with the spirits of the dead. Then, this, the medium said, we have a very special surprise tonight for you people. A spirit will manifest itself openly here in a few minutes. And it's like, it's like a big gust of wind hit the building. And right through the wall. <laughs> the, the lights weren't uh, terribly bright, but they, you know, they were like in the living room lights. Uh, a couple of floor lamps and maybe some of these. And that uh, translucent being seemed to come right out of the wall. How did you feel right at that moment? It's almost like my heart stopped a little bit. <laughs> you know, very weird feeling. So it was a lady in a beautiful evening gown, floor length. And she said to, to Mary, my dear sister, you are so wonderful to ask for me. And Mary fainted and fell right off her chair on the floor. <laughs> and a couple of girls jumped up and picked her up and uh, straight gone. And that was the beginning of it. That's how you got into it. Yeah, that's the way I got into it. After a while, you see, there's something interesting about the, the human uh, mind. You can adjust an awful lot of stuff. You can adjust to a lot of things that you that would 
terrify you to begin with. After a while, they become common and ordinary. So you mean contact with the supernatural can become commonplace and ordinary and doesn't bother anybody? Yeah. In other words, the more that you do it, you're not uncomfortable. That's right. Just not. What the world needs is a good whipping. I haven't come forth in a great many years because I didn't want to be relegated to another guest on a TV talk show. But I can assure you, Satanism is here to stay. Satan can take the form of a beautiful woman. Satan can take the form of a sleek animal. An automobile can be very satanic. These things can be anthropomorphized into Satan. Well, when I was a teenager, I was interested in the occult. And the occult in those days meant you got dream books and you got books on fortune telling and all that sort of thing. And the closest thing there was to anything about calling up spirits or demons and that sort of thing was a lot of gobbledygook where you stood around in a circle and you used the protective names of Jehovah and Jesus and all that. And uh, I tried it. Oh, Lord knows I tried it but it didn't work. And so I thought to myself, well, if I'm going to call up any demons, if I'm going to get any magical power, if I'm going to get anything going my way, I better get on the side of those guys instead of protecting myself from them. I love life very much. And it's been said that I can't possibly love life, that I'm a very unhappy man, or must be a very unhappy man. And I would say that I'm a very happy man, an extremely happy man, in a compulsively unhappy world. The Church of Satan would have nothing to do with, uh, with something like breeders or abductions of children or stealing of animals or that sort of thing. Because, uh, again, the question why certainly isn't very satanic to want to take anything against its will. My uh, relationships with some of the sex goddesses of the past have been largely as a result of luck more than anything else. However, in the case of Jane Mansfield, uh, she was an active member of the Church of Satan and certainly under tragic circumstances left the Church of Satan. And the situation concerning Miss Monroe, that was a long, long time ago, long before the Church of Satan. However, she did have an unswerving interest in the dark side of life. And I think that was one of the main reasons that we managed to hit it off the way we did. To the detractors or the accusers or the people of the other side that would say that Satanists would like to kill animal sacrifice animals, I would say that they would make ideal human sacrifices. I love animals. I've always been part of animals. Animals are part of me. I believe that all churches of all denominations should be taxed to the hilt. If churches were taxed as any other business, because that's what they are, simply businesses. If they were taxed, the national debt would be wiped out overnight. If they were taxed, the national debt would be wiped out overnight. have an agenda. Is it satanic? Yes. Do they want a world government? Yes. Are they willing to kill for it? Yes. Have they killed for it? Yes. They're not happy with controlling people's bodies, but they want their very soul. And more than that, they want Satan's representative on earth, the Antichrist, to be master. book of the Bible, the book of Revelation, says the Antichrist will come among us. It doesn't tell us when or in what form, but according to some evangelical Christians, Satan's minions are already here, creating havoc in everything from rock music and education to art and government. We're trying to warn the world that there is a very corrupt, 
debauched, depraved group of men whose goal is to bring in the great unified world kingdom under their hellish master, Lucifer. They believe in their lord, Lucifer. They expect to have a satanic society. There's no question about that. The Bible says that in the last days there will be ten world rulers. These ten men will be of one mind. They will give all of their strength unto the beast. 666. Oddly enough, one group who regard this particular satanic conspiracy with some contempt is the Church of Satan. Certainly the world is not ruled by a group of men who are trying to pave the way for the Antichrist. The powerful men in the world are always de facto Satanists because they're the people who understand how power functions and how the human animal functions. Their goal is not for some mythical Antichrist, it's simply for their own profit. And that's always been the rule since time began. Satanists say they don't worship a devil or an antichrist, merely the carnal human with all his deep, dark desires. They reject the notion that they are the instruments of evil. As they see it, far more worrying is the power-hungry nature of fundamentalist Christians, whom they believe have concocted the whole satanic conspiracy for their own agenda of world domination. Christ is the answer! The devil. And don't tell me they ain't one. You can look around and see him everywhere. Christ is the answer. Yes, he is the answer to the world's ills today. Christianity in the past was linked to the state power. They did have the ability to kill anyone who was a heretic. I think that many Christian groups today would like to regain that power and crush anyone who opposes them. They are obviously acting in concert because they have certain goals and aims which they wish to put over culturally on the citizens of the United States. They would like to control the government. They would like to control the school systems. They would like to put their sort of autocratic uh, religious beliefs over on people who have no wish or no desire to have them. But isn't Christianity a religion of love and forgiveness? I don't believe there's a conspiracy of Christians trying to take over the world and, and force everybody to become a Christian. There are some Christians who do hope and pray that through political means they will be able to instill more Christian type values within society. That's certainly a far cry from trying to take over the world. Christ is the answer! Yes, he is the answer to the world's ills today! He is However, the to such are the levels of mutual distrust and suspicion that conspiracy theories flourish on both sides. Sides. On the one hand, the evangelists accuse the Satanists of seeking world domination. On the other, Satanists claim the evangelists want everything their own way. Let all witchcraft, sorcerer, fly from ahead. The battle is akin to an exorcism, each seeking to eliminate the other. But in reality, both sides need the other to survive. philosophy that has been formulated and organized into a, a productive social force that uh, uh, takes or accepts the premise that man is not a creature to be redeemed, but one who must recognize within himself his own potential, his own liabilities, and deal with them accordingly. We feel as Nietzsche when he obviously wrote to uh, also struck our opinion is that man can no longer fall back on established religion as a sort of identity, collective identity. And occultism is a sort of do-it-yourself God kit in whatever form it takes, oriented towards personal power. As a result of this, those who could be accepted collectively simply by being Christians at one time, for example, now find that with automation, 
with advances in technology that their roles as human beings are much are less in a great deal and much less viable than ever before. So as a result of this, they have set themselves up in sort of a minor godhead role or god role or goddess role in a, a specious or rather illogical at times form of importance or sense of importance. So I honestly feel occultism gives many people a chance to be big fish in little ponds. But man must learn, of course, his animal nature by studying the nature of the beast and from the children, this childlike sense of wonder. And to be able to relate to these things within him and the animal within him in order to develop into the higher man. The, the, the man who is ultimately going to succeed or to survive on this planet. In your book, The Satanic Bible, you say, Hate your enemies with a whole heart, and if a man smites you on one cheek, smash him on the other. Yes. Do, you, do you believe in this? Yes, very much so. I think everyone does, except they cloak it in forms of false uh, altruism or false morality. They feel that there's so much repressed aggression and repressed hostility that is never allowed to manifest itself because of teachings such as turn the other cheek that it is, it is made man an intrinsically vicious creature because he's bottled up all of these feelings or he channels them into what would appear to be innocuous directions that are actually much more harmful to those who are around him. To look up the animal instincts. Yes, I, I fully agree that it is an excuse, but then I also agree that Christianity has been an excuse for many too because there are many sects of Christianity that believe that in order to attain a spiritual quality or some sort of communion with God, one must be purged of any carnal desires and the only way to rid oneself of carnal desires is to release them fully. And of course the cliche in Russia believe this that there's this incline, this little flame that's inside of everyone and it one must be purged of any carnal desires and the only way to rid oneself of carnal desires is to release them fully. And of course the cliche in Russia believe this that there's this incline, this little flame that's inside of everyone and it burns brightly until it's extinguished through lust and through the, the expression. Do you believe in God? Do you believe in Jesus Christ? No. No. Irrevocably not. I believe that the Godhead resides within oneself. I believe that man creates gods in accordance with his own needs. And if he doesn't, someone else will create them for him. Who or what is Satan to you? Satan is the essence of that which dwells within myself. Would you explicitate this? Satan is the pioneer, the inventor, Prometheus. Satan has always been the scapegoat, the other, as Thomas Saws, the psychiatrist, calls him. He has always been the opposition to what has been established at the time. The counterbalance that creates change, that creates evolution, that sets the climate socially for modification. Because without this so called evil, there could be no change. Mr. Lavi, many of your critics and opponents of Satanism say that you are a businessman and a humbug and you're doing all this just to make your money. You are a show businessman, is that right? Well, I believe it's a Barnum and Bailey world. It's as phony as it can be. 
as the, to- as the song, a popular song stated, and if I am a humbug, and I am a phony, then everyone else is a phony too, and I feel that you have to be a certain bit of a showman in the world in order to get ahead, in order to attain your goals. You have to get people's attention, and in order to deny this aspect of recognition that each of us has, every animal, every living creature, what wishes recognition in some form or another, this is the whole concept of the mating process, is to be recognized. I think to deny this is to be hypocritical, to be dishonest in the worst way. In other words, uh, you agree that you misuse people for your own purposes? Oh, if someone begs to be misused, then I'll be very glad to oblige. According to the Satanists, in their search for world domination, evangelists have used occult manifestations to frighten people. I think the, the wave of uh, hysteria about some sort of national satanic conspiracy started with a TV show done by the reporter Geraldo Rivera. He claimed to have documented vast instances of child abuse and kidnapping and ritual abuse and and baby eating and all this crazy stuff. Instances of child abuse and kidnapping and ritual abuse and, and baby eating and all this crazy stuff. In 1984, this belief in a satanic conspiracy was triggered when rumors of satanic child abuse emerged from a nursery school in Southern California of a network of tunnels beneath the school where satanic rituals were performed sent shockwaves across America. A court case later said the teachers were innocent of all charges, but the thought had been planted in many minds. There's, you know, no legal proof that they did any of these things, but, you know, among the conspiracy theorists, there's this belief that they were uh, in a satanic cult and they were committing ritual abuse of kids. Uh, That helped spur the big national satanic conspiracy theory, and it led to this almost cottage industry in experts on Satanism. As half-truth, gossip, and rumor spread, the hysteria began to grow and the stories became more fantastical. They used stun guns on children. I saw children with shock collars put on, so if they disobeyed their trainer, they were instantly shocked. As a child myself, I remember a night march. I fell down in the mud crying. And my mother came over in her military boots and kicked me and said, get up. You will get up. You won't stop. I saw children drugged, hypnotized. I saw them strapped to tables. I saw children buried alive and told if they ever told again that they would be buried forever. It seems inconceivable that such atrocities could exist without people knowing about them. The reason Svali gives for no record of any investigation is that the police, teachers, government officials and social workers were all members of the cult. However, for those who've explored how hysteria spreads through society, this is just an indication of how victims back up their claims without having to provide solid evidence. A conspiracy theory is, in a sense, a self-fulfilling narrative. Once you start to tell it, in order to explain why there's no evidence, you have to keep expanding it. Somebody is destroying the evidence. It's in the interests of mysterious, powerful people that you can't identify, but somebody higher up doesn't want it to be known. That's why you can't prove it. However, those making the claims say their biggest obstacle is persuading other people to believe them. Society's denial is also one of the greatest help to these groups because your average person does not want to believe that these things happen. We don't want to hear about horror. We don't want to hear about abuse. We don't want to hear about ugly things. And often, the average person will turn their eyes away from these things. It's almost as if we believe if we don't see it, it doesn't exist. Something has happened to these people. I don't think they're all crazy. I don't think they're all lying. I don't think they're all in it for the money. I think something has happened. The question is what? Whatever happens nowadays, it can provoke an hysterical response all around the world. Now we have global communication, we have television, we have the internet, we have mobile phones. 
And if something happens in one region of the world, however tiny, however remote, instantaneously, it spreads all over the world. So the stories of panics, conspiracy theories, rumors, which might have taken years to circulate, now are instantaneous. And while the United States was tied up with its satanic panic, the hysteria crossed to the UK. Ritualized abuse of children by devil worshippers. Ritualistic abuse. Allegations of satanic ritual abuse. Children on a Rochdale housing estate. 17 children have now been removed. Taken from their parents. Ritual abuse on Orkney. A network of satanic followers. Tunnels beneath this cemetery. Of Satanism. Satanism. Satanic abuse. During the 80s and ending pretty much by mid-90s, there was something we call the satanic panic. And it was a time when fundamentalist Christianity was promoting the idea that Satanists had infiltrated the culture and were kidnapping women and breeding babies for sacrifice. The material that was used in order to start the hysteria in the UK all used material which was sent to them, communicated to them from contacts in the US within the right-wing fundamentalist camp. The stories began with sexual material, that they were being sexually abused, that they were being raped, that they were being fondled. Then religious imagery came in, that crucifixes were used to molest them, that they were witnessing infant sacrifices. The government subsequently found no evidence of satanic child abuse. But as events in the UK and the US showed, the satanic conspiracies caused actual trauma to the people caught up in the frenzy. This was serious primary damage that was done to family situations, children taken away from their families, child care workers and parents being imprisoned. Many of those cases have now been overturned in the courts. Um, nonetheless, that is irreversible damage. is a journey back to the roots of paganism, to mystical belief and superstition. A timely journey, because there is an occult explosion taking place in the Western world. In nomine Satanus, Lucifer excelsis Dei. Hail Satan. anywhere it could be in san francisco from our point of view it really makes no difference whether you pray to a father god or to a mother goddess or to an entire gaggle of gods and goddesses you're still wishing the same thing you're still wishing to be included you're still wishing for their acceptance you're waiting for them to put their arm or arms around you and say you belong you are part of us you can relax we will take care of you we approve of you we endorse you the satanist the black magician does not seek that kind of submergence of the self we do not seek to have our decisions and our morality approved or validated by any higher god or being we take responsibility unto ourselves the temple of set follows the ancient egyptian prince of darkness satan in another guise it's America's only legal satanic church and enjoys tax-free status. Lilith Sinclair and temple director Michael Aquino edit the satanic newsletter. It has a circulation of 75. Basically, Christians, as well as many other religions, and even a lot of the occult groups are around, uh, are afraid of us. We threaten them. Uh, not physically, but our existence and our philosophy threatens their security because we pose questions that they don't want to face and that they don't have answers for. The Temple of Set emerged from the Church of Satan, founded in the mid-60s by Anton LaVey, a one-time lion tamer and carnival performer, and the Church of Satan's self-appointed makers. Satan, Leviathan. In the name of our most exalted God, Satan, Lucifer, I command thee to come forth. Shemham Farash! Shemham Farash! Hail, Satan! Hail, Satan! Friend and companion of the night, 
rejoices to the bang of dogs and spilt blood. Look favorably on our sacrifices. Open wide the gates of hell. And come forth. Shamham for us. Shamham for us. Hail Satan. Well, it had occurred to me for many, many years that there was a uh, large gray area between psychiatry and religion that uh, was untapped, and no religion had ever been based on man's carnal needs or his fleshly pursuits. All religions are based on abstinence rather than indulgence, and all religions, therefore, have to be based on fear. Well, we don't feel that fear is necessary to base a religion on. <clears throat> the fact that religions for thousands of years have been uh, telling people what they should do and what they shouldn't do according to the basic whims of a person who might be running the show is very understandable. We're realists, we Satanists, but we also feel that a person has to be good to themselves before they can be good to other people. This is a very selfish religion. We believe in greed, we believe in selfishness, we believe in all of the lustful thoughts that motivate man because this is man's natural uh, feeling. Well, today was 6606, but... To make this story better, we'll just call it 666. <laughs> to shun the sign of the devil. But to one group here in Southern California, 666 means it's time to party. CBS 2's Glenn Walker is live in Los Feliz with a group calling itself the Church of Satan. Glenn. Yeah, Paul, this is an invitation-only event at the Steve Allen Theater on Sunset Boulevard. A hundred members of the Church of Satan here tonight celebrating their religion's 40th anniversary. As the sun began to set here in what they call the City of the Damned, worshippers of the Church of Satan began to arrive, properly attired for their version of High Mass. For one church official, that includes subnormal implants in his forehead. We're having a Satanic High Mass to celebrate the 40th anniversary of our organization. Peter Gilmore is the Church of Satan's High Priest, founded in 1966 by this man, the late Anton LaVey, whose soul now resides we presume, in a place much warmer than California. While tonight's high mass is taking place on the same date, a movie depicting evil is opening in theaters, these Satan worshippers say tonight is about enjoying life. We're not devil worshippers. We don't believe in God. We're atheists. We're Epicurean. We look to enjoy everything to the fullest. Is this something you apply to your everyday life? Uh, that would be like asking me uh, if Satanism affects my life. I affect life by being a Satanist. Well, it's just a great excuse for a good party. So this is more theater than religion. All religion is showbiz, and we're about the only religion that admits that. Now, uh, we were not allowed in that high mass tonight. We were told, though, that three rituals were performed involving compassion, destruction, and lust. Most churches I know about, one out of three of those is allowed. Live tonight in Las Feliz, Glenn Walker, CBS 2 News. The Church of Satan, located in New York City reports to have several hundred thousand members worldwide. And the attraction of Satanism is that it's the first religion in the history of the Western world to accept man as he really is. He's a carnal animal, a beast, and is something to be exercised, not exorcised. To its followers, Satanism is about celebrating man, not worshipping the devil. Satan. Thy strength is mine. Drink in honor of your true nature. Satanists claim they don't even believe in the devil, per se. In nomine Dei nostri, Satanasi superi excelsi. Satan has a word has significance in many different contexts. In a Christian context, it's one of absolute evil and opposition to their God who represents absolute good. To a Satanist, Satan means adversary or opposer, which is the original meaning of the word. And we are the opposers of all who would try to make man spiritual rather than carnal. Regarded as the devil's work, rock music sends shivers down the spines of all good fundamentalist Christians who set out to combat its supposedly satanic influence. The Parents Music Resource Center was set up in the U.S. to draw attention to what they regard as Satan's lyrics and images on CDs. They got together in councils, which were almost literally war councils, to plan and plot how to take the United States back from what they felt was a conspiracy in the other direction. Because they felt so vividly that they were fighting a conspiracy, they became a conspiracy of almost a military scale. Your music, rock and roll, is a satanic music. You make the music go black, and you hear Satan speak. You make the 
The people behind the PMRC were mostly Washington wives, Republican and Democrat, including Tipper Gore, wife of Al. Also joining the crusade were the fundamental Christians of America. I want to see music that advocates a kid kill themselves. Ban. I want to see music that says you go out and kill your parents. Ban. In New York State, Pastor Brothers has taken this one step further. He's founded the Freedom Village, an institute designed to wean impressionable youngsters off guitar riffs and suggestive lyrics. We have been called deprogrammers of young people. Well, at first I didn't like that term. The more I got to thinking about it, the more I did like it, because I think somebody better start deprogramming these young people. Not everyone is convinced that rock music will spawn armies of Satanists and sex slaves. Music is to entertain people. It comes in all different shapes and sizes. I may not like it, and you may not like it, but that doesn't mean you have to uh, create a legislative climate that keeps that music from uh, being available to the people who want to enjoy it. It is only music. There is no devil, and it's not going to hurt you. But when claims of backward masking emerged, it seemed fundamentalist Christians finally had the proof they needed that the Antichrist was communicating through music. Backmasking became part of the anti-rock satanic conspiracy theory in the early 80s. The idea was basically that satanic record executives would plant evil messages backwards on albums. The idea was that if you put a message backwards on a record, it would have some kind of satanic sorcerous power over the legion of uh, susceptible fans, making them, for example, smoke drugs, rebel against their parents, or worst of all, possibly turn homosexual. First reached the media as a high-profile issue with the attempt to prosecute a British heavy metal band called Judas Priest. The band were accused of subliminally embedding the words "Do it, do it, do it" in their album Stained Class, which the prosecution alleged provoked a suicide pact between 20-year-old James Vance and 18-year-old Raymond Belknap in Reno, Nevada, in 1985. This case is about mind control, the manipulation of the minds of consumers for the objective of making money. It's interesting, though, they didn't specify do what, do your homework, I don't know. Is there anything there that could be considered a subliminal message? Even though Judas Priest were acquitted of all charges, the question of subliminal messages remained on the agenda. The strongest argument that backmasking doesn't work is the fact that if it did, you can guarantee the church and state would have been using it for centuries. I think the hysteria over the so supposed link between, you know, the supposed Satanism in, in rock music uh, has, in fact, spurred on a lot of rock groups to become more and more, quote unquote, satanic. It's a great marketing tool. It's a great symbol of rebellion. So, uh, you know, is there some sort of sinister conspiracy behind it? No, I, I think that, uh, you know, it's something that's created by the people who fear it. But from the Beatles to the Beastie Boys, few bands escaped the accusation that they were working hand in hand with Satan. The PMRC said that ACDC stands for Antichrist Devil's Children. Now, if you had told that to the members of ACDC, with whom I worked extensively, they would have fallen off their chairs laughing. I've always studied the, the, the lyrics, and I found that only people deeply into Satan worship and occultism would write these things. They also made astonishing claims about Kiss's name. They said Kiss stands for Knights in Service to Satan. Where would Satanism be without Ozzy? I don't think Ozzy Osbourne is a Satanist. I mean, he's a showman. And this is what a lot of people don't understand. Most notoriously, he's supposed to have bitten the head off a bat. Though, if he gained any black magical powers from that, they were probably outweighed by the fact he then had to have uh, rabies jabs. You look at their albums. Someone put those symbols there. Someone had those incredible images. Someone gave them the words. The bet noir of almost every American parent, Marilyn Manson. It was amazing to see the Christian picketers at the, at the Marilyn Manson concerts who were so, you know, worried about, you know, let's face it, a rock star. Uh, the kids, they're not interested in the old stayed stuff. Now they want to get deeper. They've been desensitized. <laughs> 
uh, music, by television and popular uh, culture uh, into the most horrible, filthy depredations. Absolutely, this is bringing uh, people into uh, such a mindset that the Antichrist will walk in with ease. He's got his whole substructure. The infrastructure has been prepared for the coming on the stage of the Antichrist, ultimate evil. So, if or when he comes, how will we actually recognize him? I believe he could come uh, as a man of, of great statesmanlike appearance. Will he be a world leader? He may. Will he be a religious leader? Possibly. But certainly he will be a man that people will trust. Prince Charles has been uh, put up as a possible candidate for the Antichrist. You know, I don't think so. I think he's a little bit too, too goofy to be the Antichrist myself. George Bush, Henry Kissinger, Bill Gates. I've heard also that it's a 27-year-old American living in the uh, Southwest. Which narrows it down to about 30 million. What about the people who follow the satanic belief system? Are they devil worshippers? Or do they actually just have a different philosophy on life? The Church of Satan was founded by this guy, Anton Sander Levy, back in San Francisco, 1966. That cat right there with the, is that a burger? No, that's a skull. He was the head of the Church of Satan for 30 years until his death in 1997. And now the church operates out of New York in Hell's Kitchen neighborhood. Obvious. And the high priest is Peter Gilmore. So, Peter, let's break it right down. Some of the myths of the Church of Satan. You don't actually believe in Satan, do you? Right, we're not devil worshippers, we're Satanists. We start off being atheists and then decide that we are our own gods, the center of the universe. And so Satan for us is a symbol of freedom, liberty, and pride, which we think is a wonderful thing. Well, now, now why Satan? I mean, you could have been inspired by Dylan, you could have been inspired by Shakespeare, well, well, and you would have had way less hassle. Why did somebody go, you know that guy that everybody hates in the Bible? That's the guy. Why him? Well, Satan trumps all of those folks, first of all, and we're certainly good showbiz folk, as all people in religions are, although we're the only ones who admit it. And Satan in Hebrew means adversary, and we are the adversaries for all of those spiritual religions that tell people to wait for some afterlife and waste their current lives. We don't think that you live after death, so you've got to enjoy yourself now. Well, and as bizarre as, as many religions would seem to an outsider, you recognize that uh, religion does provide meaning to people's lives. W w certain people take a lot of meaning from it. What does the Church of Satan provide people in, in the form of meaning? Well, me, for us, meaning is something that you have to give existence because we think the universe is indifferent to us. There's no God, there's no devil, there's no afterlife. So you have to take control of your own life and decide what is going to have meaning for you. So Satanism is a tool for our members to get the most out of life. What, what are the rituals of the Church of Satan? What do you guys do? Do you meet every Sunday? What's your deal? Well, ritual is a tool, and we are not required to use it. Uh, we consider it a self-transformative psychodrama. It's a way of going into a theatrical space where you release any emotions that are hindering you from enjoying your life. So if somebody's done you something wrong, they've gone out of their way to harm you, you go into the ritual chamber and you put a curse on them. You take a doll of them, you stick pins in it, you scream and shout and system. Then you leave it there. You don't take it with you once you've gotten out of the chamber. And that way you feel a hell of a lot better. Yeah, but would you actually feel like you're sticking pins in people's dolls, imagining their people? Do you expect that somebody out there is going to go, Jesus, my back really hurts all of a sudden? No, no, we don't expect that. But if something bad happens to them after that, we're not going to feel sorry for them because they're the ones who harmed us in the first place. Well, I guess it's, there are, obviously you always hear the negative press that comes to the Church of Satan uh, anytime there's some sort of ritualistic killing out there. Uh, your church steps up and disavows yourself uh, from those groups. Do you have any relationship with those people who call themselves Satanists and do these things that you don't agree with? Well, actually, the FBI has proved that there really are no organized groups doing any of those ritualized killings. That that's a big misnomer that was fostered by Christian evangelists during what we call the satanic panic. Every once in a while, you'll find somebody crazy who is a Christian. They believe in the Christian God and the Christian devil. And they believe that, that their devil symbol is evil. And they might use that to try to put something negative on someone they hurt. But that's something that's actually far rarer than you might expect. How does somebody... It just gets a lot of attention. And how does somebody become the high priest? How do you become the black pope? Well, at least we all saw when Pope John Paul II passed away and the whole process to bring us Benny the Sixteenth. We saw the black smoke and the drop. What, do you, what happens when you become the black pope of the Church of Satan? 
Well, in the Church of Satan, it's merit, not inherit. So I spent a long time working as an administrator of the organization, being uh, on the Council of Nine, which is the board of directors for the, for the whole thing. And I was a close friend and confidant of Anton LaVey. So when he perished, he basically had set up his companion, who was our high priestess, Blanche Barton, myself and my wife, Peggy Nadramia, to be the main administrators of the organization. And it became magically appropriate for me to take the reins and be the high priest. You know, I grew up as, as a fan listening to blues music and listening to rock and roll and metal, and you always heard Satan uh, attached to all three of those. Like, and you always hear about them in the context of high-profile members. Uh, you got, uh, I mean, Marilyn Manson apparently was a card-carrying member of your church. Have you got a lot of other high-profile people who are members of your church? So certainly, of course. Uh, we have ones that will tell you who they are, and, you know, King Diamond, of course, and Sammy Davis Jr. was a member, as was Jane Mansfield. And then we have high-profile members who will never let you know because it would harm their careers. And in Satanism, since Satanism is a tool, not a cause, we don't require people to be open about their membership. So that the folks who are in the PTA, who are running corporations, who are working in law enforcement uh, and in the military, we have plenty of people over in Iraq, that they won't get hindered in their career by the Christians who would be with them, who would be prejudiced against them. But you've seen all the good work that Tom Cruise has done for the Church of Scientology. Don't you think you need one of those for you guys? We're fine. <laughs> if Tom Cruise ever decided he wanted to be part of us, he's a good producer and actor. We'd think that was great. But uh, we're doing okay. Of course, all good things come to an end, including the world. And the return of the Antichrist has generated no shortage of prophesizers diligently on hand to warn of imminent disaster. I cannot count how many Christian doomsayers there are in American society at this point in time. It is a very, very big thing to teach that the Antichrist is soon going to rise, that the end of the world is just around the corner. There's always been people and groups who, whether it's based on the Bible or some other uh, text or, or, or belief, believe that the end of the world is, is about to happen. Or that there's some secret group that's trying to bring about the end of the world for their own sinister purposes or the end of civilization anyway. So really apocalyptic ideas and conspiracy theories are very closely tied together. If the book of Revelation is to be believed, the end of the world will be quite an event. There will be the four horsemen of the apocalypse, each one bringing greater terror than the one before. The pale horseman is, I think, the most terrifying because he brings with him death. The belief that the world's about to come to an end has always been very popular, and I don't know if I'd say there's the people who are espousing these beliefs are in it for the money. Maybe some are. It makes a good story, makes good movies, like The Omen. But perhaps it's not the end of the world we should be worrying about. Rather, the conspiracy theories that generate the fears and distrust in society and the people who use them to justify their existence. There have always been moments where certain things in culture have caused people to be very tense about their lives. This is when they have looked for a conspiracy theory to explain everything. And what's happened is that sometimes people have used the conspiracy theories to go after various different groups of people. Jews, blacks, Catholics, Satanists, even Christians. Um, and so it's something that can be very dangerous. No matter how much you question a conspiracy theory, once it's become embedded, in the belief system of a person or a cult story, they will find ways of rationalizing if they simply expand the boundaries. And far from dumping down the conspiracy theories, both the evangelists and the Satanists continue to add fuel to the fire because it's in their interest to do so. Without an enemy to fight, there's little meaning to their existence. The game is about over. Because of all the events of the Bible, there are only a few events that are left to occur. But those events are so dramatic that I literally almost cry to consider the horrible gravity of the things that are going to occur. Are Satanists conspiring to take over the world and influence the culture? Some might say that. I think that the human future will be directed by many Satanists, although the general culture may never know that they've had their hands on these things. people have an agenda. Is it satanic? Yes. Do they create wars? Yes. To bring about peace. 
and that peace is deadly because that's going to require all of us to surrender everything we've got to this evil archie this oligarchy of evil to this evil archie this oligarchy of evil